everyone, it's me again, and I'm back with another video where I use my voice again as much as I hate it because of voice dysphoria and because of how soft it generally sounds. But yeah, I'm here with another tutorial um, with general shading. So before I really get into it, I want to mention that I do have a Discord server. If you want to join it, you can it's in the description as well as my social medias, including my Patreon. With Patreon, you get uh, exclusive perks like viewing work in progresses and other things. It also has a Discord server that's linked in there for patrons only, um, and you can also have access to Not Safe for Work channels. I'm also sorry if you can hear background noise because my cats are in my room. <laughs> that's all I have for now. Be sure to check out my socials and stuff too, please. And yeah, let's get to the video. So the first thing I want to show is the color palette I usually have up in the corner of the screen. I want to talk a little bit more in depth about that. So the first thing we have is the color of the object. Then we have the colors that are meant to add shading. And then we have colors that are meant to contrast with lighting. And we also have some environment shading colors and some environment lighting colors. With the general shading colors, those are the original colors with the brightness being minus 15. The saturation is upped by 10 by each color. And with lighting, it is the opposite, except all of them are either set up or down with saturation and luminosity and lighting by 10. As for the environment shading and the environment lighting, I would recommend that you do not use black and you pick out colors that correlate with the scene you're trying to go for. With black colors, they can throw off the color scheme you're trying to go for. So after the line art and coloring everything, I get started uh, setting up my palette and once I finish that, I get started on shading. So the first thing I do with the gradient shading is take the lightest shading color and then I layer it on from light, most lightest to most darkest, uh, depending on where your light source is coming from. And sometimes I will use a more stronger uh, blur tool to help uh, with the shading process. And afterwards then I blur the rest out. And so the next shading we have is the airbrush shading, which is a layer that goes below the general shading. Um, and with the general shading's uh, layer opacity being set to 50%, I can get started with the airbrush shading. So I take a pen with an airbrush tool and I take the middle color from the darker shading palette area and I use that to shade over it. This, uh, this type of shading I use usually acts as a filler for anything that um, might have messed up during the sh uh, blending process of the gradient shading. I'll set the airbrush layer opacity to 25% and then I add in another layer called hard shading. So this goes below um, the airbrush shading and the gradient shading. With this one, I don't blur anything out. I use a very hard, um, I use a standard brush or sometimes a line tool to help out. And the color of this is always black. And then sometimes, then I'll set that to 25% and I'll sometimes go in with a very soft eraser and just lightly blend out um, some parts of the shading to make it seem more natural and less harsh. I'll set that to 25%. After that is the lighting. So with this one, it's I basically treat it like the same way I would with gradient shading. Layering it down from least bright to the most brightest one there, and then carefully blending it out. This one is also set to 50% opacity. And it currently goes over all of the general shading layers. Now it's, for, it's time for the environment shading and lighting. So with this, I take an airbrush tool and set the size to 800%. Then I take the first environment color and I start to carefully shade that in. 
I'll set that layer to 25% opacity, then I'll add another layer with the brush size being 2000% in size. I'll take the second one and I'll carefully go over the, the first environment shading and I'll also set that layer to 25%. Then I'll merge the two layers together. Sometimes, depending on how hard the lighting is, I sometimes set it to 50% if the lighting isn't that strong. As for the environment lighting, it is essentially the same thing except when I go in to pick out the first color, I have the brush size set to 1000%. And as for that, that is going to conclude the shading tutorial. Hopefully you guys found this informative and can pick up inspiration from the way I shade, I generally shade things. I also have another tutorial I did that goes over shading hair and texturing it. If you wanna, if you're interested in that, there should be like a little eye card up there in the corner somewhere. Please be sure to check out my Patreon and especially my other socials. And feel free to join the discord that's also linked below. I originally wasn't going to do this video after a while. I knew that after I made the hair tutorial video, I wanted to make a piece of artwork. And then after that was finished, I wanted to put out another tutorial of some kind. But now I paused my current one just to make this. Uh, I'm getting it done in a single day so because of how you know easy and simple it is to shade really basic things like these shapes I have up here for you guys to watch me draw and as for um as for uh content coming up in the future I'm going to be starting community college uh again another year but I'm going to be taking four classes this time because of you know insufficient credits so I do want to catch up on those and um so content will be produced a little bit slower uh come the month of September. Uh, if you like this video, please make sure to like it and possibly subscribe to see speed paints or maybe even more tutorials. If you have any requests of what you'd like to see me uh, make, please leave them in the comments below and I will see you all in the next video sometime in the future. Bye!